Here we're going to look at consolidated financial statements derived from a consolidation worksheet here. So we have the parent corporation and the subsidiary corporation, their trial balances shown here, and then we've made elimination and adjustments here to consolidate the uh, subsidiary with the parent corporation. So we've shown all our, we've made all our calculations, and now we'll just go and look at how the, the basic financial statements that we derive from these calculations. All right, looking at the consolidated income statement. Now looking at our worksheet here, we have our revenues and our expenses. We combine those uh, for the parent and the subsidiary here. And then we also had an extra depreciation expense here for, the, for a building involved. And then totaling these up or summing these up, we come up with the consolidated net income here of $134,000. So we have to break that apart between the non-controlling interest and the controlling interest or the parent's portion here. So in this case, I've used an income distribution schedule here to calculate the non-controlling interest. We won't go through it, but it turns out to be $5,400 here for the non-controlling interest. And then uh, using, an, again, the income distribution schedule here to determine the controlling interest or the parent's amount here comes up with $128,600. So going up here and looking at the corporation P's consolidated income statement, that's for the end of the year here. Again, we have our revenue and our expenses as shown here on our consolidation worksheet and then we have it totaling those we come up with 134,000 here just as it would be here on the consolidation worksheet for the uh, net income here and then we have to distribute those between the non-controlling interest 5,400 and the controlling interest here of 128,600 so we just take those right off our worksheet here so we've taken off our revenues and expenses and off our worksheet and then also the uh, uh, income here as it's distributed Okay, looking at the non-controlling interest here on a consolidation worksheet. Now that really isn't a financial statement, but it's used here to show the total ownership of the non-controlling shareholders. So we look here at the common stock and the retained earnings after the eliminations here, and we determine that to be um, for the non-controlling interest. And then we also had a dividend declared here, so we determine that portion here for the non-controlling interest and then we have to calculate the income uh, that's distributed to the non-controlling interest here and we did that through an income distribution schedule here and that's transferred over to our non-controlling interest so summing up um, our uh, stock and the retained earnings assigned to it plus the dividends here declared for it and then the income that it earned for the year here we get a total amount here for the non-controlling uh, shareholders and that would be their total ownership interest okay looking at the parent corporations consolidated retained earnings statement as of the end of the year now we divide that up between the non-controlling interest and the controlling interest so looking at our non-controlling interest here on the uh, worksheet here we have the retained earnings that they were proportioned out here uh, at the beginning of the year here or adjusted to back to for twenty thousand dollars and then their dividend proportion here was two thousand dollars for the dividend declared and then they were also given five thousand four hundred dollars here for their portion of the net income that was earned for the year so going down and looking at the retained earnings statement we have the retained earnings here for the beginning of the year of 20,000 the consolidated net income here of 5,400 less the dividend declared here of 2,000 so the retained earnings as of the end of the year would be $23,400 now looking at the controlling interest here uh, we go up to our worksheet here and we see that the retained earnings that they were uh, given here at the beginning of the year was two hundred and forty six thousand dollars and then their portion here of the income earned for the year was one hundred twenty eight thousand six hundred dollars so going back down to our retained earnings statement the retained earnings here at the beginning of the year was two hundred forty six thousand plus the consolidated net income that they were portioned here for the year of one hundred twenty eight thousand six hundred and that would be uh, those totals would up would total to the retained earnings as of the end of the year here for three hundred seventy four thousand six hundred dollars 
All right, looking at the parent corporation's consolidated balance sheet as of the end of the year. So first looking at the assets here. Uh, our other assets or net tangible assets uh, would be the combination of the parent corporations and the subsidiary corporations, other assets or net assets here of $754,000. And then we had an adjustment here uh, due to the fact that a building increased here by $60,000, less it had $6,000 depreciation allocated to it. So the total amount here would be $54,000 for the increase in that building. So going down to our consolidated balance sheet here, our net tangible assets were $754,000 here off the worksheet. And then the building was uh, calculated here to increase by $54,000 off our worksheet here. So our uh, summing those, our total assets here would be $808,000. Okay, next looking at shareholders equity and that would be broken down here for the non-controlling interest of $33,400 here and that was what we calculated here as the total uh, interest here in the non-control for the non-controlling share here uh, shareholders off our worksheet here of $33,400 and then the controlling interest well that includes the common stock that w was sitting here at the beginning of the year higher for $400,000 off our worksheet plus the retained earnings that were calculated for the year here uh, allocated to the controlling interest here for $374,600 so summing those amounts here we got total liabilities here of $808,000, which matches our total assets here of $808,000. All right, in summary, looking at the parent corporation's consolidated income statement here as of the end of the year, we combined the revenues and expenses here for the parent and the subsidiary, and then we also had a depreciation expense here. So the total of those here gives us a consolidated net income here of $134,000. And then we had to break it down here between the non-controlling interest portion here of $5,400 and then the controlling interest portion here of $128,600. Okay, next looking at our consolidated retained earnings statement here. So we broke that down between the non-controlling interest and the controlling interest here. So we started out with the retained earnings as of the beginning of the year here for um, uh, both the non-controlling interest and the controlling interest. And then we apportioned out the consolidated net income here for the year between the controlling or non-controlling interest and the controlling interest. And then we also had a dividend, de dividend declared here, the portion that was assigned to the non-controlling interest. So we come up with the retained earnings as of the end of the year here and that's really the divided up here or the sum here for the non-controlling interest. Their amount we proportion that out here uh, for the retained earnings as of the end of the year and then also the controlling interest that was proportioned out here as of the end of the year. And finally, looking at the consolidated balance sheet here. So we have the net assets here for the uh, parent and the subsidiary, and then we had an increase here in the building. So we have uh, total net assets here calculated. And then the shareholders' equity, that was broken down between the non-controlling interest. That's their total interest here that they have in the um, uh, consolidation here for the year. And then the uh, uh, controlling interest that was the common stock that they have plus the retained earnings that they have as of the end of the year. So adding all these up together we get their total liabilities here. So that's just a summary here on how we'd uh, use a uh, our consolidation worksheet here to calculate our uh, consolidated income statements, our retained earnings statements, and uh, consolidated balance sheet.